The World War One game series is a fantastic set of three DLCs. Oh, wait. They're supposed to be four games? Okay, well, this is the issue. Verdun, Tannenberg, and I, Sonzo. Fantastic titles that cover three famous battles from the Great War. It has been filling in a hole that only Battlefield 1 has really tried to fill, and even then, really kind of just creating a World War 2 game with a World War 1 skin on. Having automatic weapons and never really leaning into what makes the Great War famous and a unique battle in the modern age. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy all three of these games, but they have a big issue. And it started in 2014 in Verdun. Being the first installment of the series, it was something very new that people weren't quite sure about, but it was fresh. Especially in 2014, we had nothing along the lines of a World War I game, and especially a first-person shooter. Multiplayer only, teams of two sitting in the trenches and waiting for the enemy whistle to blow. As they charge over no man's land, it was up to you to take pot shots. With such fast time to kills, mostly one shot 90% of the time, it was a brutal and terrifying experience. Then, when the time came, the challenge would swap. The other team would then start to attack, and the aforementioned opponents would be on the defensive this time. It was a different way of doing multiplayer shooters. Not everybody was just running and gunning trying to capture objectives, but actually holding lines, following orders, and making sure that they were trying to create this World War I experience that no other game had ever done. And it was pretty popular. People really enjoyed it. Massive YouTubers like Frankie on PC were getting in on the fun. Jack Frags. And it was a title that kind of set a precedent. And because of this success, it was only a matter of time before we got a sequel. Verdun did on its own last quite a while. But it was always going to go into something else. And then we got Tannenberg in 2019. Tannenberg was an almost entirely different experience, setting ourselves onto the Eastern Front. It allowed the players to experience the lesser known battles fought between the Russian Empire and the Central Powers, with its vast open landscapes and intense multiplayer battles. This was a lot like Verdun in many ways, yet in others, in terms of settings and actual gameplay style, was completely on a different spectrum. You see, you still had the clunky, first-person shooter mechanics that Verdun championed, the interestingly behind its time graphics, yet the draw to it was this World War I setting. And whilst in Verdun we were sitting in the trenches, holding lines and waiting for the whistle to blow, Tannenberg was more along the lines of your general FPS shooter. Objectives to take and people charging across open fields. Everything from trenches to hills to forests to bunkers. This was what I really wanted from a World War I game. Verdun created is something very special, but it did have a very certain type of gameplay style that I think kind of missed with many, at least mainstream casual fans. Not everybody is interested in following orders and waiting five minutes for a whistle to blow before they actually get some action, especially in a game like Verdun where snipers were absolute kings. They could sit at the back of the battlefield sniping anybody that even popped their head out of the trenches in a realistic, granted, World War One manner, but in terms of gameplay, it didn't exactly make for the most entertaining of series. Because of this, Verdun started to trail off, and Tannenberg did start to do the same, but Tannenberg itself introduced bots into the series, which gave a lot more longevity to the title, so people kept going with it. But it wasn't until 2022 that we got Isonzo. When it was announced, I was incredibly excited for this game, going into the Italian Alps and once again having a very different experience. Whether it's fighting through towns or through the Rockies, this was beautiful. The scenery had been upgraded. Graphically, they've ramped it up to 11. And even gameplay-wise, I feel like the gunplay is way better than we got in Verdun and Tannenberg. Fierce mountain fighting and one of the most beautiful backdrops that I've seen in a AA game in the last few years. So all these titles were fairly successful, right? Well, upon release, yes, they got a decent amount of press and I think a decent amount of influx of new players, but there was one big problem. You see, if you go to Isonzo's page now, not even being out for a year, there's only 120 people playing on it with a 300 concurrent player 24 hour peak. Yeah, okay, you can fill a few servers with that, but it's still not that much. Even with the new expansions coming in, it's very rarely spikes the player base people don't seem all that interested. Verdun and Tannenberg are all but dead with pretty much no players on them at all. So what went wrong? What happened? And I think it comes down to my opening sentence. These are three full games, but really are the sizes of DLCs. 
And we can take another title to contrast and compare this to get a bit more of a better idea of what I mean. How Let Loose came out around 2019. It was a World War II FPS, 50 players on each side, creating these massive battles. The maps were huge, whether it was Omaha, Utah, St. Mary and Gliese, later to be Stalingrad and Kursk, and more recently El Alamein. These battles were so big, and that was their draw. You see, Battlefield had kind of started to go the route of Call of Duty. Fast-paced, smaller scale stuff with fully automatic weapons, even their forays into history with Battlefield 1 and 5 really just focused on modern day weaponry with a historical skin on it. So people had really been looking for a game to fill that niche. And that's where Hell Let Loose came in, with more realistic bolt action weaponry, but of course full team gameplay with commanders down to officers, down to tank commanders to recon squads, to your grunt infantry, all with their special classes, whether it's medic, machine gun, so on and so forth. Yet it didn't lean quite as far into a hardcore simulation like Armour 3, but it still gave a much more realistic and still fairly casual fast paced experience like Insurgency did for the modern day. And this filled in the niche that nobody else had done before catering towards more casual fans but bringing them into a simulation era of FPS gaming. And that's where the World War 1 series of games really stood up, with its unique selling point. There hadn't been many World War 1 games and especially when Verdun came out it was really the first World War 1 FPS that got a bit of limelight, so that's what brought people to it. Especially with the game modes of Trench Warfare in Verdun, Tannenberg with the more open stuff with bots and Isonzo within the mountains and fire in these regions, very rarely done and very rarely looked upon with game companies, especially with a double A series like this. But after you have that unique selling point, you need something else. Okay, well, Hell Let Loose added in a lot more content and of course fixes that come with it. They added in new maps, whether it was adding in Kursk or Stalingrad and the whole Russian faction, to more recently the British faction with El Alamein, maps like Remagan and so on and so forth. These are huge additions to content, full maps, multiple new maps, new weaponry and of course new armour and vehicles. Things like Half Tracks came in earlier this year. Later on, we're going to get Finland and Poland coming in a very, very soon as well. There is so much content being added into Hell Let Loose, and it's keeping players there because it is all free. Okay, granted, they do have some skins and hats that you can buy as DLC, but most of their main content and the bulk of Hell Let Loose's updates are all free. And they never did this with the World War One game series. Of course, mostly down to the fact that I'm assuming it's just not a reasonable thing to ask. It's a much smaller company that needs to be able to afford to make games, but instead of just adding new maps, instead of creating free editions or even DLCs, they make entirely new games. Verdun, Tannenberg and Isonzo could and probably should all be part of one game with one payment and they should have just released free updates after it. Because Black Matter, who created Hell Let Loose, were not this massive AAA studio when they started. They were, I'd assume, a similar size. But they played the long game and they have just been purchased for 40 million. Now could Blackmail, who make these World War 1 games, get to that point? I feel like the setting itself just doesn't really lend itself to much of a wider audience and a more mainstream audience than World War 2 games. It could have been another way to do it. Because these are fantastic games, but I feel like splitting them into three has really hurt the series. Because now you have three titles that have no player base. Whether you could have one that could slowly have built its player base over the years as Hell Let Loose has done for the last five. And I am still going to pay attention and look forward to seeing what the World War One game series does, but maybe eventually we might even see them merging into one.